Hello, my name is Pastor Tim Brewington, and I am the pastor of Fellowship Church. At Fellowship Church, we're just ordinary people who have experienced extraordinary life in Jesus Christ. And our mission is to tell others what we have experienced so that they too can experience this wonderful Jesus that we serve. I would like to send a personal invitation to you, your friends, and your family to join us at one of our worship services. You will find that we are a community of believers that focus on the word of God, worship, and praise. During our worship services, we believe in just letting the Holy Spirit have his way. So please join us at one of our worship services. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody glad to be free today? Free in Jesus. As you take your seats, please turn in your Bibles to Psalms 37. Psalms 37 is where we will find our scripture text this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you for your presence that's with us today. We thank you for your anointing that destroys the yoke. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that purchased our freedom today. Hallelujah. That we don't have to be bound by anything, but in Jesus, we are free. Hallelujah. God, we pray as we enter these next sacred moments that you will remove every distraction that will get in the way to prevent your word from going forward with truth and clarity. God, we need your presence today. Not something that's manufactured in our minds, but we need your presence that changes lives. We need your presence that destroys the yokes of bondage. We need your presence that heals wounded bodies in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We need a word from you that will change everything. Hallelujah. One word from you, one touch from you. Hallelujah. Makes all things well. Send a word in the house this morning. In the name of Jesus, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalms 37, we'll read verses 1 through seven out of the New Living Translation of Scripture. The Bible says, don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will help you. He will make your innocence radiant like the dawn, and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. This is the word of the Lord. I want to speak to you this morning about the keys to having a lasting or strong relationship with God the keys to having a strong and lasting relationship with God. We live in a culture that speaks to us and screams to us like the baby screaming now, <laughs> that in order to have a good life, you have to have good things. We measure the quality of a person by what they possess. And so I grew up with this, this mindset that if I wanted to have a good life, then I need to work hard, get a good job, 
so I can get a good house, drive a good car, and buy a lot of nice things. And then if I had a lot of nice things, then the quality of my, my life would be better. It was such a perverted way of thinking that I would look at someone who didn't have much and felt sorry for them. Like their life didn't have the same quality as the person who had a lot of things. The reality is that person was probably looking at me, feeling sorry for me because I was worried about getting a bunch of things and they had figured out how to be happy with little to nothing at all. I realized as I was growing up that the quality of your life is not based upon things, but it's based upon the quality of the relationships that you have. As I got older and started losing people who were important to me, I realized the only thing that really matters are the relationships that you develop in your lifetime. As I studied the word and experienced God, I, I realized that of all of the relationships that are important, the most important relationship in your life is your relationship with God. I said the most important relationship in your life is your relationship with God. Your relationship with God impacts every other relationship you have. If you don't have peace with God, it doesn't matter who you marry. It doesn't matter who your friends are. It doesn't matter what your connections are. If you don't have peace with God, you will not have peace with anybody else. You may be able to get along with everybody else, but there is something about your relationship with God that touches everything you touch. If you have relationship problems anywhere, Instead of blaming the person who you're in relationship with, the first place you should check is your relationship with God. How are you with God? Can I tell you, when I am not where I need to be in God, all of my relationships are under a strain. Oh, y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Listen, every relationship depends upon your relationship with God because you don't know how to love and forgive and be patient until you have embraced the love and the forgiveness and the patience that we receive from God. Forgiving people is difficult until you remember how much God has forgiven you. Putting up with people is hard until you remember how much God has put up with you. Forgiving offense is hard until you remember how much you have offended God. Can I tell you, nobody has been more offended than God. Hmm. No matter how deep your hurt is, no matter who hurt you, you have hurt God more than any pain that you have ever experienced. Oh, man. Hmm. Your relationship with God. Is key. And Jesus came. Jesus came to break down the barriers that hinder our relationship with God. Jesus came to remove everything that will block us from having a relationship with God because God cares about relationships. The Bible says that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. God cares about relationships. We care about stuff. We care about things. But God cares about relationships. When we look at this text, the writer here speaks to how to have a relationship with God. There are four elements that I find in this text that speak to the keys that are necessary to have a strong relationship with God. The first key is trust. The second key is delight. The third key is commitment. And the fourth key is rest. To have a strong, lasting relationship with God, there must be trust, delight, commitment, and rest. Let's look at verse 3. 
the writer says, trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Trust is the first key to every relationship. Matter of fact, every relationship requires an element of trust. If you don't have trust, you don't have a good relationship. And these relationships can be casual, or these relationships can be more intimate, like a marriage. For example, you need to have a certain level of trust in your relationship between you and the restaurant that you may go to later on today for brunch. You have to trust, after you make your order, you have to trust that the person in the kitchen is not going to put anything in your meal that's going to make you sick. When is the last time you've been in a restaurant, ordered some food, and followed the waitress back to the kitchen and watched the chef prepare the food? You have to trust that they're not going to put anything in that food to harm you. You take your car to the mechanic, and you have to trust that he's going to fix the real problem without creating another problem. No, that's never happened to y'all. You got to trust. Hmm? You go to the doctor, you have to trust that he knows what he's doing, that he's been properly trained. You have, if you take some medication, you have to trust that that medication is not tainted with something that could harm you. And so it is with your relationship with God. There has to be trust. And sometimes we trust the person at the restaurant more than we trust God. Sometimes we trust the mechanic more than we trust God. But trust takes time. Time produces experience. In order to trust God, you must build experience with him. That's why you don't meet somebody at 10 o'clock in the morning and marry them at 4 o'clock because there's not enough time. I hope, you're, I hope nobody here did it. I hope it worked out for you. <laughs> huh? Okay, you waited till 6. You gave yourself a couple more hours. But you don't do that. Because in order to trust somebody, you must spend time with them. You must experience how they are. The same thing applies to our relationship with God. If we're going to build trust in our relationship with God, we must experience him. We must take time and go through things with him. How do you experience God? You find yourself in a situation and you want to do things your way and you decide this time I'm going to do it God's way and see what happens. And then after a while, you have enough experience to know that no matter how difficult it looks, no matter how hard it is, you know that it is better to do things God's way. God's way is not always the easiest way, but it's always the best way. And experience tells you that. You get to the place where you trust God so much because of what you've been through that nothing can change your mind about God. But in order to have a trusting relationship, you must be careful about who you listen to. Hmm. Listening to the wrong people can erode the trust that you have in God. The same thing in a marriage you having difficulty in your marriage, be careful who you seek counsel from. Don't listen to your partners or your girlfriends and they tell you, if I had a husband, I would do this, I would do that. That's a big if. If you had a husband, I might listen to, to what you have to say. Hmm? You have to be careful who you listen to. When you're having difficulty in your relationship with God, be careful who you seek counsel from because it can erode your trust in God. Why are you having a struggle in your life and you're listening to somebody who doesn't read the Bible, doesn't come to church, don't have a relationship with God, and you're taking counsel from them and you're wondering why it's so difficult for you to trust God. Stop listening to Dr. Phil and Oprah and everybody else. Open up the book and read the word of God. Y'all know we got in this mess in the first place because they were given instructions in the garden 
and the king of and the father of all lies said you don't have to trust what God said trust what I'm saying and the reason we're going through what we're going through right now is because somebody was listening to the wrong person sometimes we're in trouble in our life because we listen to the wrong people why would you go to somebody who doesn't have a relationship with God to get advice on how to strengthen your relationship with God? Why would you face a difficult situation and get counsel from somebody who doesn't have faith, hasn't worshipped God in years? They cannot build your faith. They are going to erode your trust in God. You need to seek counsel for somebody who can talk to you about the faithfulness of God that has experienced God enough and say, my brother, my sister, you can trust God to handle your situation. It takes trust. The second thing we see that you need for a relationship with God is in verse 4. It says, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. Can I tell you that relationship with God is meant to be enjoyed? Hmm. Relationship with God is not a chore, it's not an obligation, it's not a demand, but it's a delight. We ought to enjoy our relationship with God. God wants to fulfill our heart's desire, but more important than that, he wants to be our heart's desire. Yeah, nobody wants to be in a relationship with somebody who is there because they feel like they have to be there. Nobody wants to be in a relationship with somebody who spends time with them because they have to spend time with them. No, we want to be in relationship with people who enjoy their time with us, who look forward to spending time with us. We want to be the first person they think about in the morning and the last person they think about at night. And that's what God wants. God wants you to enjoy your relationship with him. The Bible says that in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. When is the last time that we've sought the presence of the Lord and say, God, I just want to spend time in your presence. I'm not asking for nothing. I don't need anything. I don't want you to fix nothing, change anything. All I want is to spend time in your presence because I just enjoy worshiping you and praising you and reading your word and being still in your presence. Our relationship with God is to be enjoyed, but the adversary has come and tricked many of us to believe that relationship with God is about a list of do's and don'ts and it's demands and don'ts. Don't do this, and you must do this. But I want you to know that God wants us to enjoy our relationship with him. He says, delight yourself in the Lord. Find delight in the Lord. Enjoy your time with the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, let me give you a key on how, how that works. The more time you spend in the presence of the Lord, your desires change. Let me give you a secret here, because God is very wise in what he's doing. When he says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart, the more time you spend in his presence, he takes your desire that you have for yourself, and he puts in you the desire that he has for you. And then he says, I will give you what your heart desires because now what you want for you is what I want for you. Oh, can I tell you, if, if anybody's upset about that, let me tell you, what God wants for you is much better than anything you could ever want for yourself. Clap your hands. So, so we have to delight ourselves in the Lord. So relationship with God requires trust. It also requires delight. The second thing, the third thing we will see is in verse 5. He says, commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. Having a lasting, strong relationship with God requires 
that we commit our ways to the Lord. The Hebrew word commit means roll away. Roll away. So the translation of that verse reads, roll away your desires upon the Lord. In other words, give your way to the Lord. In other words, surrender your way to the Lord. Your way of thinking, your way of being, your way of living, he says, give it over to the Lord. When you commit your ways to the Lord, your speech and your behavior changes. When you are committed to the Lord, you don't talk the way you used to talk and you don't behave the way you used to behave. Now don't judge me, but my favorite Michael Jackson song is about a rat named Ben. Y'all know that song? You can wink at me if you know that song. I won't tell anybody. The lyrics of that song says, I used to say, I am me. Now it's us. Now it's we. Now, yes, he's talking about a rat, but those are some profound lyrics. You should look it up on YouTube. It is a, a wonderful song. But, but the point is, because I'm committed to my relationship with you, I don't talk about I, 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 and me, me, me. I talk about us and we. When you are committed in a relationship, your focus changes. When you are committed in a relationship, your behavior changes. A married man who is committed to his wife doesn't behave like a single man. A married woman who is committed to her husband doesn't have the same behavior of a single woman. We can tell how committed you are to things by your behavior. Go to work tomorrow. Look at the behavior of people, and you can tell who is committed to the job because their behavior is different. You can look at your own self and tell what are you really committed to by your behavior. Your behavior will indicate how committed you are to the church you go to, to the marriage, to your family, and to God. Your behavior changes based upon how you are committed to the thing that you are involved in. And God showed that he was committed to us by sending Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. He didn't just sit in his committed, oh, I'm committed to relationship with God, with, with my creation. No, he did something to demonstrate his commitment to having relationship with God. And if we are going to have relationship with God, our behavior must change. We must commit all of our ways unto the Lord. That's the challenge. That's the challenge because we are convinced that our way is better. We are convinced that there's certain things I can handle, but the Bible says that we must commit all of our ways unto the Lord. So strong relationship with God requires trust, delight, commitment. And here's the last one that will be done for the day. The last key is rest. Verse 7 says, be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. He says, be still in the presence of the Lord. C can I admit that this is probably the most difficult part here? We talked about this in our men's fellowship on yesterday. Being still in our culture is extremely difficult because our culture tells us that you should always be doing something. You should be building something or tearing something down. Waiting time is wasted time. You ought to have your hands in something 
all the time. If there is a problem anywhere, it is your job to fix it, whether it's your problem or not. The idea that you will sit and do nothing is countercultural for us. But yet, the writer says, be still and wait for God to act. Y'all know what it's like. You have that challenge, you have that problem, and you have a plan on how you want to fix it. And the moment you get ready to fix it, God says, be still and wait for me to act. But God, you see how long it's gone. You see how difficult it is. And I think this right here may fix the problem. And he says, no, wait for me to act. See, being in a relationship with God is not just about being still, but it's about letting go of the will of your own life and being a passenger in the car and letting God drive. It means, all right, I'm going to get out the driver's seat. I'm going to be a passenger, and I'm going to let God drive. The Bible says that we are dead and our life is hidden with Christ in God. So basically he says all of your plans, all of your directions, all of your GPS systems are dead. You are a passenger and God is the driver. Hmm. Can I confess something? My, my girls are 17 years old and Tony, they are on my back about getting driver's license. Every, come on, I got some witnesses in here, right? Driving me crazy about getting their driver's license. And I got to be honest, I'm not ready for them to get driver's license yet. I'm just not ready for that. So I make up excuses every time it comes up. Every other day when it comes up, I make up excuses why they're not ready to get driver's license. I go in their room, their room is dirty, see? You don't even keep your room clean. How can you drive a car? Go downstairs, cell phone is unattended. You're not responsible for a cell phone. How can I trust you with a car? It's 8.30 on Saturday morning. They're still sleeping. I'm like, you don't even get up on time. How can I trust you to drive a car? Y'all didn't watch exactly. Y'all let him go outside unattended. You're not responsible enough to drive a car. The reality is, though, I'm not ready to give up my control over making sure that they get to where they need to go safely. Because I'm still convinced that I can do a much better job at making sure they get to where they need to be safely than they can. Hmm. And I'm right. <laughs> but when it comes to our relationship with God, that's our problem. We won't give up control of our life to God in every area because we are still convinced that we can do a better job at getting to where we need to get to safely. We are not ready to release or lose our control over our destination and how to get there because we still think that we are better equipped to determine what is right for us. If you are not ready to lose control over your life and surrender your control over to God and let him drive that you're not ready to have a relationship with God. Not only that, but the joy of having a relationship with God is to get out of the driver's seat, become a passenger, sit back, put your headphones on, roll your windows down and enjoy the ride and trust that he will get you to where you need to go safely. The joy of having a relationship with God is that you don't have to worry about any anything. We miss the joy. See, in order to be a passenger in somebody's car, you must trust the driver. Huh? You don't get into a car and be driven around by somebody you don't trust. That's why trust is important. Here, there is rest available for us. Things get better when you learn how to step back and let God take the wheel. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you can experience a level 
of peace and rest that you've never known before when you step back and let God drive. Here, here's my last point here. These elements, these keys to a relationship with God work together. The more you let him drive, the more you trust him. The more you trust him, the more committed you are to him. The more committed you are to him, the more you enjoy your relationship with him. We have to be aware of a couple of things, though. There are some things that hinder our relationship with God. Spring has finally sprung, and it's time to do some spring cleaning, and I plan on doing some of that this week, cleaning out my garage, throwing some clothes out of my co co uh, closet. Thank you. Haven't been in there in a while. It's called a closet. <laughs> a lot of stuff in there to get out. But it's also a good time for us to look at our relationship with God. This is not a message to make you shout, but it's a good time to look at our relationship with God and see, is there anything in our life that's making it difficult for us to trust God? Is there anything in our life that is making it difficult for us to be committed to God? There are things that erode our trust in God, things like comparing ourselves to other people. When you compare yourself to other people, it makes it difficult for you to trust what God is doing in your life. There are things in your life that make it difficult for you to enjoy your relationship with God. Things like comparing yourself to other people. When you compare yourself to other people, it makes it difficult for you to enjoy what God is doing in your life because you're too busy judging what he's doing in somebody else's life. There are things in your life that make it difficult for you to be fully committed to God. Things like comparing yourself to other people. I hope you get what God is saying here. There are things that make it difficult for you to sit back and rest and allow God to take you where he wants to take you. Things like comparing yourself to other people. Listen, I wanted to give you a list of things that hinder our relationship with God, but the only thing I kept getting was stop comparing yourself to other people. The one thing that will destroy your relationship with God is when you compare yourself to other people. Can I tell you the truth here? I am good with myself and what God is doing in my life until I start comparing myself to somebody else. I'm going down the highway of life, trusting God, committed to God, enjoying my relationship with God. I am good with him driving until we're driving down the highway and I look in the other lane and I see how fast somebody else is going. Then all of a sudden I'm like, God, do you see how fast they're going? They started after me and they are ahead of me. Are you sure everything is all right? I'm good with what I'm driving until I'm going down the highway and I see another car. And I'm like, God, look at the rims on that car. What's wrong with my car? I was good. I was comfortable. Everything was fine. But I got sidetracked because I was looking at what is in the lane that somebody else is going through. Can I tell you, the biggest mistake you can make is to live your life comparing yourself to other people. It will be impossible for you to really enjoy who you are in God when you are constantly comparing yourself to other people. May I warn you, never compare what God is doing in your life to what he is doing in somebody else's life. There is no need for you to be envious or jealous of anybody because you know what they're going through on the outside, but when they go home and shut that door, you don't know what kind of battles they are fighting. And yet the adversary will use these things to erode our trust in God, to destroy our relationship with God. Stand to your feet if you would. 
this, this message really is intended for you to reevaluate where you are in your relationship with God. Do you trust him? Do you enjoy him? Are you committed to him? Are you resting in him? Hmm. Listen. God desires to have intimate relationship with us. Not a relationship based upon duty and a list of rules and regulations, but a relationship that is spirit to spirit. Yeah. There is an experience with God that is greater than what we experience on a day-to-day -day basis. But can I tell you, it doesn't happen overnight. It's one experience after the next. Overcome one challenge, then you overcome the next one. Handle one issue, and then you deal with the next issue. And over time, experience says you can trust him. Hallelujah. Over time, experience says, yeah, it is better to, to do it his way. Even if it's painful for the moment, it is better to do it his way. Because his way is the best way. Can I pray in this moment? Let's look to heaven. Hallelujah. God wants to do something in here today. Hmm. God is saying, I want a deeper relationship with you. This message is God's word to us today. He wants more of us. The Bible says if we draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to us. What does that mean? If we reach out to him, he will reach out to us. And in this moment, we have a few minutes here. We're going to pray. And when I say we're going to pray, I don't mean we're just going to go through the motions of prayer today. There's something deeper that God wants to do in this place today for every heart that is open to receive what he has. Hallelujah. Glory to him. He's going to do it today. And if you believe that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, I want you to start praying now. Come on, open up your mouth and pray. Not listen to me pray. Hallelujah. Let God hear from you today. Let's charge this atmosphere with the words of faith. Hallelujah. Let's charge this atmosphere with words of confidence in God. Hallelujah. You should have what that you say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's push further than we are right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to touch somebody today. He wants to restore somebody today. Hallelujah. Whatever the break in your relationship with God, God wants to restore it today. Hallelujah. Acknowledge it. The moment you acknowledge it, you go into restoration. Hallelujah. Confess it. Acknowledge it. God, I have failed in my relationship with you. Hallelujah. I haven't trusted you. I haven't enjoyed you. I haven't been committed to you the way that I should. I haven't rested in you. I've taken over the driver's seat in my life. But God, in this moment, I step out of the driver's seat and I become a passenger. Hallelujah. Take me where you want me to go. I trust you. Hallelujah. We trust you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your goodness unto us. We thank you, Lord, that you desire to have a relationship with us even more than we desire a relationship with you. But I pray, oh God, today that we will confirm 
I will trust in you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that our experience has taught us that you are trustworthy, that we can depend on you, that you won't fail us no matter how bad it gets, no matter how hard it is, you won't fail us. God, restore our joy in relationship with you. Bring us back to the place where we delighted in you. Hallelujah. We enjoyed our fellowship with you. We enjoy spending time with you. Hallelujah. Take us back to the place where we were eager to pray and eager to worship, eager to bow before you, eager to shut the world out around us and spend one-on-one time with you. In the name of Jesus, God, we commit our ways to you. All of our ways, God. The ways that we think, the ways that we feel, the ways that we behave, hallelujah. Change our speech, change our behavior to demonstrate that we are fully committed to you, hallelujah. You are all that we need, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And we claim the rest that you offer us. We are still in your presence. We will wait on you, hallelujah. You will move on our behalf. We wait for you to act, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. God, that person in the room right now that is struggling in their relationship with you, who feels that because of what they have done, there is a wall separating them from you. We plead the blood of Jesus right now. We claim that the blood has come. Hallelujah, to destroy every barrier, every blockage, every hindrance that will keep us from having relationship with you. By the blood of Jesus, cleanse their heart and their mind, God. Let them know that you're still available, you still love them, and you've been waiting for this moment, hallelujah, for them to come back home and say, yes, God, I love you. Bless God, I trust you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. For 30 seconds, just worship God where you are. Commit yourself to a new relationship with him. I'm declaring a newness in my relationship with God. Hallelujah. We used to sing a song, Take Me Back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Hallelujah. I'm going back today. I'm going back to that time when I first realized that God loves me. I'm going back to that time when I was first filled with his spirit. Back to the time, hallelujah, when I fell in love with Jesus. Anybody remember the day you fell in love with Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going back to that time, hallelujah, where we fell in love with Jesus. God can do it for you today. God can do it for you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Sing one verse of that that song, please. Thank you, Lord. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, where I first believed. Take me back. Take me back. Sing it if you know it. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Anybody want to go back? Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, where I first believed. One more time. Take me back. Oh, take me. Take me back. Oh, no. Take me back, dear Lord. To the place. To the place where I first received you. Take me back. Take me back. Oh, no. 
take me back to Lord where I first believed we're going to dismiss but if you need prayer today after we dismiss please meet us here let us pray with you you want to recommit your life over to the Lord today today will be a good day to do that you want us to stand and agree with you that you're going back to the place where you first believed, that you are picking up where you left off with God. You're getting rid of things that are hindering your relationship with God, and you know what that thing is. Make a commitment today that that thing dies today. Hallelujah. That your relationship with God is the most important relationship you have, and anything that gets in the way has to die. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, if you're in that place, Meet us here at the altar after service so we can agree with you and pray with you. Amen. Where I first received you one more time. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, where I first believe. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you, Lord, that you stand with your arms wide open, ready to receive all who come to you. We thank you that you're standing here ready to receive those who are weary and carry heavy burdens. We thank you that you are standing here ready to receive those who are carrying things that are too heavy for them. You said in your word that we can cast our care upon you because you care for us. We thank you, God, that you're standing here ready to receive all those who are lost, who are confused, who are in pain and need a touch from you. Hallelujah. We thank you that your arms are open to us today. God, we receive all that you have for us. In the name of Jesus, make the way plain. Make the progress clear, God. In the name of Jesus, show us whatever it is that's in our life that is hindering our relationship with you so that we can handle it and destroy it at the root because you are the center of our joy. You are our reason for our being. You are the song that we sing. Hallelujah. And you are who we desire hallelujah and so we thank you that you are restoring relationships even right now hallelujah that you are breaking barriers right now you are the god of restoration hallelujah restore our hearts and our minds towards you the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. If you desire prayer, please come at this time. You are dismissed. Hi, my name is Tim Brewington, and I am the pastor of Fellowship Church. Thank you for viewing this broadcast today. For more information about Fellowship Church, please check us out at www.thefellowshipmn.org. God bless you.